Hi there, I'm Adam Ringshaw from Greenwich Fitness and Performance and today in this short video I'd like to share with you what I like to call basic training. If you're working out in the gym, I want to give you five simple principles, five simple steps that you can follow no matter what exercise you're performing to get the maximum out of that exercise. Now these are the simple, basic fundamentals of working out and training, but they're often neglected and often forgotten by most people. It's just like when you join the army, you have to go through basic training before you can do anything more advanced. This is what I call the basic training principles that you must apply before you can start doing many more advanced strategies or techniques or methods or workouts. So let's go through the five fundamental core things for basic training which you should be applying when doing any exercise in the gym. The first is your breathing. Now I see so many people mess this up, either not breathing at all, which I never recommend, or breathing in the wrong sequence while performing exercise. So let's break this down for a moment. At a basic fundamental level, you wanna breathe out on exertion. Or said another way, breathe out when you're moving or lifting the resistance. Okay, so if let's say we're doing a bicep curl, you'd want to take a breath in, if you start on the bottom, and you would breathe out as you lift the weight. Okay, and then you control it down, take a breath in either while you're lowering it or at the bottom. But the key thing is you breathe out as you lift the weight. Same if you're doing a press, you would exert yourself and exhale. Breathe out on the exertion, okay? Or breathing out when you're lifting the weight. It's true of any exercise. I don't care if you're squatting, if you're lunging, if you're doing a deadlift, if you're performing a chest press. Now, of course, like everything, there's exceptions to the rule, but that's a fundamental basic training, getting your breathing sequence. Now, it's gonna do two things. Number one, it's gonna oxygenate your body. It's gonna get the oxygen in, the carbon dioxide out, so your body can perform better. That's what creates energy, right? Is effective breathing. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to produce force. By breathing out exertion, you can produce more force and therefore lift more weight, increase your strength, and stimulate more muscle tissue in the gym. Think of any athlete, a boxer, yeah, a javelin thrower, tennis player. They breathe out exertion. They breathe out as they produce the force they're required to produce for that activity. So I want you to do that with your training. Breathe out as you lift the weight on exertion. Right, number two, ROM. Short for range of motion. This is another thing I see so many people making mistakes in the gym, is using a limited range of motion. I'm a big, big believer and a big advocate, and I preach all the time to my clients, is using a full range of motion in every exercise, in every set of every rep you perform. For multiple reasons. One of which, using a full range of motion is gonna get a full muscle recruitment in that muscle. You're gonna recruit more muscle tissue, more fibers. Two, it's gonna keep you more flexible and mobile long term. Okay, if you do a limited range of motion, you're gonna use a limited range in the muscle and you're gonna create what's called adaptive shortening and you're gonna get tight muscles if you do that repeatedly over time. So range of motion, full range of motion, whatever the exercise, basically all the way up and all the way down, okay, as long as there's no bad pain. Um, it's gonna keep you more mobile, more flexible and keep you in the game long term. Okay, the other thing you're gonna do is gonna create good habits. You don't want to increase your strength and lift more weight at the sacrifice of range of motion. Range of motion first, intensity, weight, and reps second, okay? So using a full range of motion every exercise you do, all the way up, all the way down. Again, there's exceptions to the rule, there's advanced strategies, but this is basic training. And um, the only time you would do this, that you'd limit the range of motion, is if there was an injury you're trying to work around or avoid, or there was some kind of pain. Now, obviously, that's a unique situation but fundamentally full range of motion. Number three, every movement, okay, every movement you perform has three parts to it. Now most people focus on just one part and therefore they're missing out on two thirds of the benefit of that exercise or that movement, okay? And those three movements are the lift, the hold, and then the lower. And again, it doesn't matter what exercise you're performing, this is true of every movement, every exercise. The lift, the hold, and the lower. Now, most people in most gyms, you look around and most people only ever perform the lift. They lift, drop, lift, drop, okay? Lift, drop, lift, drop, lift, drop, lift, drop, right? You wanna focus on all three movements, all three parts of the movement, and all three components of the lift. 
So it's lift, pause, resist. Lift, pause, resist. Or lift, pause, lower. Okay? Now we don't need to get into the science behind it. This is called eccentric, isometric, and eccentric. Okay? Sorry, concentric, isometric, and eccentric. I think I said eccentric twice there. So I want you to focus on all three parts. Concentric is your lift, isometric is your hold, and eccentric is your lowering portion of the movement. Okay, by focusing all three, you're gonna triple the effectiveness of each rep, of each set, of each exercise. Okay, combine that with your other two, your breathing and your full range of motion, and you're gonna be well ahead of the majority of people who work out in the gym. Right, that's part number three. The fourth function, the fourth part of the basic training, the fourth principle, is the mind-muscle connection. Okay, now I teach this to all my clients, and I tell them to focus on it. Most people, you give them an exercise and they focus purely on moving the weight from top to bottom, moving the weight, okay? Get through the set, perform the number of reps desired and stop. But they have very little focus or intention on what they're trying to use, what muscles they're trying to stimulate or what muscles they're trying to target during that movement. So a mind-muscle connection allows you to really focus on what you're trying to stimulate, what muscles you're trying to use during that movement. So, a mind-muscle connection in a bench press, for example, you would think about the chest, focus on the chest, if that's the muscle you're trying to target and that's the muscle you're trying to develop or stimulate, okay? If you're doing a leg curl, think about the hamstrings, or a squat, thinking about the glutes or the quads or whatever, okay? The bicep, doing a bicep curl. A mind-muscle connection. The more you can develop that mind-muscle connection, the more effective each exercise, each set, and each rep is gonna become. And then the final, the fifth and final principle of the basic training is the Kanai principle, okay? Constant and never ending improvement. Listen guys, there's one thing and one thing only which creates long term results in the gym and that's progress. Your body is a super adaptive machine and it'll adapt to whatever demand you place on it pretty darn quickly. So the way you counteract that is for effective training programming, periodization, um, and avoiding plateaus in the gym, but constant never any improvement, progressing, always striving to stretch yourself and improve in terms of intensity, volume, sets, reps, weights used. There has to be an ongoing progression in order for the body to continue adapting and changing. That's how you see results long term, that's how you achieve your goals. Okay, now I've got a whole video on the principle of Kanai that I highly recommend you watch. It's on our YouTube channel. So go to that, go to that video after this if you'd like to learn more about the principle of Kanai because it's life changing. So that's it guys, that's the basic training principles. You apply that to every workout, every exercise, every set, every rep, and you're gonna be leaps and bounds ahead of most people in the gym. Breathing effectively, breathing out, on exertion, full range of motion, all the way, all the way down in whatever rep or range uh, movement you're doing. There's three parts to every movement you need to focus on, the lift, the hold, and the lower. Concentric, isometric, and eccentric. Mind-muscle connection, thinking about what you're trying to target, what muscle groups you're trying to use. And finally, constant never any improvement or continuous progression long term. Apply those five principles to your workouts, your training program, and I promise you, you're gonna see better results, okay? I'm Adam Ringshaw. If you'd like more information on our products and our services and what we do and what we offer here at Grange Fitz Performance, I highly recommend you go to grangefp.com where you can find out more about how we can serve you. Um, also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you found this valuable, please like and share this video with friends. And also, leave us your comments. Any questions you might have, put them in the comment box below. I'd love to hear from you. I'm Adam Ringshaw. Here's to your never-ending success. Apply these principles, and I'll see you real soon.